can have to start all over. Uh, morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in CE 320 for uh, RC design class. Yeah, like I said, today is going to be a relatively short class because most of the folks are going to the career fair or preparing for the career fair. So we might see less folks here uh, today. And I try to keep today's lecture short as well. So you guys uh, need, if you need to run to somewhere, you can. Okay. All right. Before we start, a uh, quick announcement. First of all, do, I mean, please do take a look at the sample problems for the first exam. Okay. Please do take a look at the first sample, uh, first exam sample problems. All right. A reason for that is if I can share my screen. <clears throat> And this is on Canvas. There's a folder, files folder, right? You, you take the homework and everything else from here. So there are two sample problem set. One is example one, sample problems. And this is what we posted last time, all right? Last time. And you see that this version is slightly different from the second version I posted this morning, a few minutes ago, okay? All right. And this is from Dr. Leslie Sneed from the same semester after revision. We were using the same exam, so it's the same thing, but the differences on the numbers are different, okay? And a few uh, places are different as well. I want you to take a, both look at, uh, take a look at both sets of problem and compare, okay? Especially, let me emphasize, especially the last problem, especially the last problem, okay? Where we're changing the number from 320 kip foot to 450 kip foot. Really go through that. And I'm pretty sure if you go through it carefully, you will have questions, okay? And if you have questions, I will be very happy to discuss with you next Monday or Tuesday or anytime you prefer, just send me an email, okay? Okay, so quick pause here. Any questions on this? Are we okay on this? Canon, Ashton, you guys okay? All right, well, pretty quiet. So. I will assume you guys are okay. If you're not, just send me an email and we can go over some of the stuff you, you want. And please do take a look at this post problem set before exam, okay? All right, so that's first thing. Second thing, the homework. Now, let me explain several things in homework number four, okay? <clears throat> now, when you work on homework number four, you gotta be careful. Why is that? Is that the width of the beam is fixed in some of the problems, right? If the width of the beam is fixed, you would have to, all, to assume the section is unknown and use that equation for unknown sections, okay? For unknown section sizes. You cannot use for known section sizes even if the width is fixed. The benefit of that when the width is fixed is that you can use the BD squared equation instead of the alpha D uh, power of three equation. All right, so that is the difference. So pay attention here, pay attention here, okay? All right, so this problem right here, we talk about it, section A, um, yeah. Excuse me, on the first problem, the height is given too, so wouldn't that be a known section? Yeah, for this one, it is known section, but some of them, I think the width okay. is given, the width of the beam is set at 16 inches, but the height is not given, right? Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, exactly, sorry if I misled. So the first problem is given, so we go from easy to hard, this is given section, this is unknown section, and this again is unknown section. Right, so the difference, I guess, between two and three is the equation to use. Number two, you use BD squared. Number three, you use alpha D to the power of three, okay? So be pay attention, be careful of the, which equation you need to use. All right, number four, uh, a quick correction. I think I mentioned this, but just to clarify that, this section A, it draws a little bit on the, I mean, in the proportion, disproportional to the length of the span, but, Section A is supposed to be the middle of this 20 feet right here, all right? Section A is supposed to be the middle of this span right here, 20 feet here, okay? So it's 20 feet from the very left and 10 feet from the left support, okay? All right, so I hope that clarified exam and the homework number four. And one thing about the due date is I have changed, I have changed homework number four due date to October the 4th next Monday after full break, okay? And this is changed uh, due to repetitive requests. And I did consider that you guys have a career fair this week. It's very hard to find time to work on it. <clears throat> so the new due date for home number four will be on Monday next week, okay? First got a few students say they want to change the date. I did not want to see that, but I see more and more students. And I realized that maybe most of you guys have conflicts this week. 
So I want to give us more time to work on the home number four. Okay, about grading, I'm done with home number one. If you haven't seen your grade, it just haven't been updated yet, but I'm done with home number one. I'll be marching on two and three this weekend. And after full break, you should be seeing two and three graded. And home number four, I'll try to grade that before exam, which is next Thursday. So that's a little pickle there because now we have to send the due date to Monday. And it only gives me two days, actually one day, so if you guys want to see it on next Wednesday, one day of grading time for me. But I will hurry up and work hard, try to get all the homework graded before the exam, which is supposed to be on Tuesday, late Tuesday or early morning Wednesday. At least you get one, two, three this weekend. And number four, probably going to be late Tuesday or early morning Wednesday. All right. And now when you look at the homeworks, I urge you not to pay attention too much in terms of calculation errors. If you already have calculation errors, you know that when you do the exam, just pay attention to the details and be careful about it. The more important thing is when I label that there's some procedure problems, errors, like I feel like, okay, this is not right step, I will label and mark it. If you see that, please go back and review that, All right, Work on that, okay? All right, so that pretty much summarizes the exam and the homework. Any questions for me? Folks, any questions about exam and homework for me? All righty. Okay, so I have made uh, exam problems and I will give you guys two hours, a good two hours, okay? From one o'clock to 3 p.m., two hours to work on the whole, uh, exam problem. There'll be four problems and we'll talk about it next Monday. Then again, Tuesday next week, October the 5th, we'll have a review session. All right, and the review session will be recorded. If you're watching right now, the review session will be recorded. So you'll be able to take a look at that as well later at your time of conveniences, okay? All right, well, if that's it, I'm just gonna stop sharing and let's take a look at the notes, all right? So let's continue. <clears throat> so here, today, we're going to talk about a little bit more of this design, a little bit more of this design, okay? Just one second, seems like my, all right. Sorry folks, give me one second. Seems my iPad refused to work here. Okay, let me try it again. Make sure this is working. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, folks, give me one second. Let me fix the problem, see what's going on here. <clears throat> okay. Share screen thing, usually it works very well. But let me try with cable sometime. It might just because this cable thing. Second. Okay. Uh, folks, really sorry. This is some technical problem I'm dealing with today. Let's see how I can get this to work. All right, folks, I'm have to switch a different network for a few seconds. So just give me one second. If you see a connection, Post, don't worry about it. I'll come back, okay? Just stay online right now, okay? Okay, let me see here. All right. Folks, are you guys able to hear me? You guys still there? Am I disconnected? Yeah, I can hear you. As well. All right, good deal. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, good deal. Sorry. I think I fixed the technical problem. It's just a mesh network I have at the place. Sometimes it jumpy a little bit, okay? So, all right, well, let's continue, okay? 
So we have talked about design for singular reinforced section. So a quick review, what we have said last time. So for singular reinforced section, <clears throat> okay, now we have gone over two things. One is design with known section size. Design with known section size. And that is if I have a dimension of the section, say width is known, height is known, and I'm simply trying to find out, and let me just use a red, so differentiate, I'm simply trying to find out the reinforcement area AS here. Okay. Now, if switch a different case, which is the second case we talk about it, is design with unknown section size. Here, we have no idea what the section looks like, okay? So essentially there are two steps here, okay? Two steps here. So AS question mark as well, of course, B question mark as well, and H question mark as well. So here there are two steps. First step is to estimate <coughs> B and D. All right, so when I say D, really what I meant is H because H equal to D plus 2.5 for one layer and D plus 3.5 for two layers, right? So when we estimate that, we're going to use the equation BD squared greater than or equal to MU phi R. Now R is the flexure resistance factor And in case you're wondering, hey, Bob, you didn't mention where I can find this factor in the ACI code. The answer is that we did not take this factor from the ACI code, okay? We took this factor from the textbook. And you can see that from textbook, chapter five, section three, okay? So if you have the textbook, you can go through the chapter, chapter five and you find it in the section three. And more importantly, is that we know R is the function of is the function of omega, and omega is a function of reinforcement ratio. <clears throat> right? And reinforcement ratio here, remember when we do design, we like to call it row initial. That means the first estimation of the reinforcement that equal to beta one divided by four multiplied by F prime C divided by Fy, okay? Now you should know also here, when we derive this equation, this is under the assumption that tensile strain in the reinforcement is at the level 0 0.0075, okay? Which is larger than the 0 0.005 of tension control limit. So here, after all the said and done, we'll come up with a section, we'll come up with a section has a width of so-and-so. And let me see, I don't have an unknown anymore. I have a width of so-and-so and I have a height of so-and-so fixed. Okay. So after that, we turn the problem into a design <clears throat> with known reinforcement. Sorry, with known section size. Okay, then we based on the reinforcement, select the bars, select the bars. Okay, based on sorry, in the moment applied here, and then <clears throat> recalculate, recompute both the strength reduction factor phi and the nominal flexure resistance mm to make sure that phi mn is greater than or equal to mu. So that was the whole design process. This is the whole design process. Okay. All right. So 2.2 is kind of repeating one. All right. It's the same thing. Okay. It's the same thing. So that is what we do when we design a singular reinforced section. Singular reinforced section. Okay. So now you should be able to do that. Now, quiz seven where I left is actually asking you to do this step from the example problem we give from last lecture, right? 
So if you remember quiz seven, this is what it is. And also quiz seven has been posted. The deadline again is next Monday, okay? Due October the 4th, okay? So check on Canvas, all right? Okay, so that is a quick review. And today we're going to talk about different things. Today, lecture nine, <clears throat> we're going to talk about design for T-sections. And again, folks, this T-section is still a singularly reinforced, singularly reinforced, okay? We haven't talked about doubly reinforced yet. We will next week, but today we're going to talk about T-beam, okay, T-section. So in this lecture, there are two objectives. Objective one, to do a T-beam design, knowing that T-beam is different from rectangular beam. Okay, so the stress distribution, stress distribution ah, in T-beam or in T-section will be different from the rectangular section. So stress distribution in T-beam is different. Okay, so we need to understand that. And second objective, of course, folks, we need to be able to design the T-beam. Design T-beam, okay. All right, before we show the stress distribution of a T-beam, I wanna show a T-beam. So if you haven't seen a T-beam before, essentially T-beam only happens in a lot of parking structures, right? In a lot of parking structures, and mainly only happen in the slab beam system, slab beam system. So assuming I have a one-way slab, one-way slab, okay? <clears throat> assuming we have a one-way slab, and I will explain to you later in the lecture and we'll talk about it. So when we have a one-way slab, you can think of right now, it's a slab spanning mainly in this direction. All right, so I have the slab itself, but the slab can only take care of the moment distribution along this arrow direction. On in along the transverse direction, along the transverse direction, okay? So this is called the transverse. This is called the longitudinal, okay? Longitudinal. So along the transverse direction, I need a beam, I need a beam to take care of the bending. And this is where the T-beam start to play. This is where the T-beam start to play. Okay, and let me exaggerate a little bit, right? Because at the end of it, I may just have an L shape, okay? So when I really say T-beam, it's not only a T-section, but also an L section, and which I want to explain to you, okay? So on the side, you would see something like this. All right, so be careful, folks. When we have the one-way slab, now the slab where I, my dash line is at is bending along this longitudinal direction. My T-beam is actually bending along the transverse direction. So truly, the T-beam has a span length of this direction, transverse direction. And let me use matching colors so you know what I'm talking about, this direction. And this direction has a span length of LM, and this is the T-beam span length. Okay, T-beam span length. So with that, with that though, now I have a problem. Why I have a problem? You see all these T, nice T are joined together and have an L at the end of it, have an L at the end of it. So when I trying to pick the side view, right? Trying to pick a side view. Say, I want to pick this portion out and I want to study of it. I have a problem because now I'm looking at a section like this, okay? So let me just play a little bit reverse and do the beam like this, okay? And this is what we see here, right? What we see here, okay? Now, in this case, right, there's a problem because we know the width of the web is BW. This is fine, we know that, right, BW. <clears throat> but when we talk about the total section size, you wouldn't know what is the flange width. And when I use BE is the effective flange width. Okay, effective flange width. 
and you don't know, right? They say, Bob, how oh, that's difficult. That's not difficult. In my opinion, I can just put in the middle of this two side of it, you know, and cut in the middle and call it the BE. Well, you can certainly call that, but whether that's according to the code or not, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know, right? And the code ACI actually have a nice way of defining it. So ACI has a table and that is in section 3.3, sorry, section 6.3.2.1 and there's a table for it. There's a table for it. Okay, so now with this in ACI, it defines this way. So BE, okay, in ACI defined as BW is the web width plus 2B, 2BF, 2BF, okay. Now what is BF? BF is the flange or the wing, a width of the wing extending out from the web. So this is BF, all right? So correspondingly, I also have a BF right here on the L shape. And note that this BF here is different from the BF here. They will have a different values, all right? So from ACI table 6.3.2.1, it basically says if I have a T shape, <clears throat> T beam that is, right? My flange width, should equal to least, be careful folks, least of, smallest of the following, right? Eight times H, eight times H, and SW divided by two, new term, SW here, and LN divided by eight, okay? And I'll, I'll explain. LN is simply the T-beam span length in the transverse direction, okay? You see that LN is that. H here is not the section height anymore. Instead, H here is the, sorry, the slab or the flange height. Okay, so if I want to be precise and ACI didn't specify that, but essentially this is HF, okay? This is HF, the flange width. Do not, and I, urge you do not use the total section, right? Use the flange height. And SW is the clear span. So HF is the height of flange. <clears throat> and the SW is the clear span length. Okay. And be careful along longitudinal duration. All right, so where is SW? SW, folks, is right here between the inside or inside walls of this T-shape. So this is SW, this is SW, okay? All right, so this is for T-shape, this is for T-shape. And let me just be a little bit cheeky, cheeky and I want to put a comparison here. So I copy this down here, okay? Now for an L-shape, for an L shape. That means this side of it, right? This is L, this is T. For an L shape, things are a little bit different, right? So the L shape says BF, again, this is flange width, should equal to least of, again, least of, the slowest, or lowest number of, three things, six times of HF, shorter, and then, SW divided by two, okay? And LN divided by 12, even smaller, all right? So if you compare them, roughly you get a sense of T-beam usually have a larger, larger BF than an L-beam, an L-beam, okay? Now, a few subtle details, right? A few subtle details. Say, if I have a team, PD, T beam like this, right? And you would assume always oh, nicely, I have equal distance. I have equal distance. But in case there's irregular section, there's a irregular section, right? So I will have a situation for 
L shape is very simple. I only have one SW. <clears throat> Because L means it terminated on one side, only have one side of the clear spans in the longitudinal direction. But for any given T beam, for any given T beam, for example, T beam here, I will have SW left and I will have SW right. And SW left may not necessarily equal to SW right. And then here in this situation, we say SW for T should equal to half of SW left plus SW right. Okay. So this pretty much settles the definition of a T beam. All right. And sometimes in equation, you don't see left and right. Sometimes you see one, two, it's the same thing, right? One, two subscript is the same thing, okay? Left and the right, basically. Again, this is L. All right, so this pretty much summarize the definition of the waste of the section, okay? Say, Bob, what are you doing? You know, why you have to do this? Because now when I give a section, I say, if I want to design this T-beam, okay? I want to put a reinforcement in it, that is. Right. For T beam, we usually give the section size. Okay. So don't panic. Usually give the section size. Okay. So for T beam, we have a known section size because when I give you a geometry, all you have to do first step is determine BF, the flange width. And after you determine flange width, after all this exercise, you will end up with a nice T beam here. Nice T beam here that has a Web width known, flange width known, and also have a height of the flange known and the effective beam width on top BE known. And be careful, right? BE should equal to BW plus two BF. Okay. Now on the left hand side, right hand side, BF has to be equal. It is always symmetric for T beam you will never see an asymmetric T-beam sections. All right? So this pretty much gave us the section, gave us the section. <clears throat> okay. All right, so now we start to get back to the question, what is the stress distribution in T-beam? Stress distribution in a T-beam. Okay. Now recall if I have a, let me use a different color. So differential, if I have a rectangular beam, right? And this will cover pretty much so far heavily. And we have a width of B, height of H, and some reinforcement at the bottom here, AS, right? And we know the strain diagram. And again, remind you in the exam, don't forget to draw the strain diagram. That gives you 20% credits, right? Remember, okay. So again, here, if I draw the strain diagram, I know that the concrete is gonna fail at 0 0.003. And let me zoom in here so you see better. And the tensile strain, the reinforcement is gonna be epsilon S here. All right, now the stress distribution, stress distribution, you know that from Whitney's stress block. There's gotta be a little bit shorter. So this is A, this is C. And mind you that A equal to beta one C, a little bit shorter, but it has a height of 0 0.85 at prime C, and this is in compression for concrete. And then I have tension in steel goes this way. And assuming everything goes to my way and it has to reach the yield strength of the bar FY. Okay, so that is the simple strain stress diagram, right? And today we're going to talk about stress distribution. So let's take a look at 3D, right, as well, right? Let's take a look at 3D. This is only 2D, right? 2D view. Now in 3D, I'm looking at a section like this. It's a rectangular, right? It's a rectangular, right? And then it has a section like that, has a section like that, right? So mind you that this is H, the height of the section. And now if I use red color to indicate my stress distribution in the 3D setting, right? This is 0 0.85C, so I have an arrow 0.85F prime C. And then it's parallel because it's the same. It's a Whitney stress block, right? And we talked about this a long time ago. When we talk about Whitney stress block, it is just like a box essentially. 
essentially like a box, right? And this has an effective compressive zone A. And then finish this box, what you see here is a nice block. And of course, within the block, anywhere you have this 0.85C, 0.85 prime C shooting against the concrete. Now for FY, remember it is kind of like, oh, let me just use blue color, kind of like reinforcement, like a strip, right? AS, right? So assuming we have tensile reinforcement, then this is area of AS and everywhere inside this box, I have FY, FFY. So that is the stress distribution in 3D. So stress distribution in 3D looks like this for rectangular section, for rectangular section, okay. Now for T-beam, it is different. For T-beam is different. Why is that? Because now you think of it, right? If I have a T-beam look like this, right? Just got it down to a BF, BF, BW, BE, and everything said and done, right? And I use the same strain distribution, right? Same strain distribution. So here's epsilon S and here's epsilon CU and 0 0.003. And now I have a stress distribution. I want to use the Winnie stress block, but immediately I will have problem. What kind of problem I have? Say I have a Winnie stress block, right? And this is A, of course, a lens of it, all right? And this is C, which is the effective compressor zone. Now, the question I have is, what if my C is greater than the flange height, but my A is smaller than the H? F. Is that right? And here, I don't know what the stress distribution I'm looking at for T section, for T section, right? So what should we do? So this question here is actually a twofold question. Why is that? Because you think of it, this actually asking you two questions here. What is the criterion to judge if Whitney stress block, right? I'm just gonna say Whitney block falls into the flange. And the second sub question you should ask yourself is, will the stress distribution in flange and in web be the same? Are they the same? Is that right? So that's the only difference because now in my section, I have flange, I have web, right? I have flange, this is called a flange, and I have the web. So there are two components. So how to judge, right? How to judge, that becomes a question. Well, luckily for us, this is not a Shakespeare or Macbeth question to be or not to be. This is a very simple question. All we are trying to do is we're going to define this whole thing, stress distribution in two scenarios. So two scenarios. And to judge which scenario we belong to, we're going to use A. We are not going to use C. Let me repeat, and this is utterly important. Do not use C to judge the stress distribution situation. For the two scenarios we're going to talk about, we're only using A, which is effective compressive zone, right? Don't forget A is B to one multiply C. Okay, so now scenario one, scenario one is that if A is smaller than or equal to HF, okay? What we say is we treat it, treat T, as a rectangular section. Okay, so you say, Bob, how? This is how. So look at the T section. If I have a T like this and turn out all my compression, all my compression is happening inside this HF. All right, so when this happens, actually 
the only thing left underneath this neutral axis, underneath this neutral axis, actually this is not where neutral axis is at, right? C is at neutral axis, but let's assume anything else underneath this line here are gone in terms of concrete. The only thing left is the reinforcement. And that I have a stress of Fy. And this folks, I have 0 0.85 at prime C. Okay, so when A is smaller than or equal to HF, I can treat the whole section. I'm going to treat the whole section as a rectangular section, joint rectangular section with a width now of BE, <coughs> with a width now of BE and height now of HF plus HW. Okay, so when A is smaller than or equal to HF, I'm essentially looking at a big block. I'm looking at a big block where the effective width is BE and the total height is HF plus HW. So that's what I'm gonna have. Okay, and for this stress diagram or strain diagram is pretty straightforward, isn't it folks? It's pretty straightforward. So I have a strain diagram looks just like this as a rectangular section, right? We have learned that well, very well before. So this is 0 0.003 and I have a somewhere of epsilon S and a better yield, right? And then we have a depth of DS again. And if this is strain diagram, then the stress diagram looks like a old friend, right? An old friend that have A, and this is 0 0.85 at prime C, and this is A, okay? And then I have a total force. I'm just gonna mingle the stress diagram plus the internal force diagram into one, okay? Okay, I'm just running out of space here. I just suggest you don't do that, but you know, in my case, I'm running out of space here. So total compression force is CC, from concrete and total tension forces T equal to ASFY, okay? And you know, with this treatment, what I left with is MN, the moment resistant will be the same equations before tension multiplied DS minus half A, compression equal to tension again, and then that means 0 0.85 at prime C, A, B equal to ASFY, and you can actually compute A. Right, then you know the drill how to design for AS. Okay, we have talked about this, right? How do we design for AS? Right, how do we design for AS? Okay, so this is scenario number one. Not so bad, right? So we always pray when we have a T section, let the effective compressor zone to be smaller than the flange height, then we're fine, we're safe. We go back to the ground number one. That's a simple way. However, not always we have that case. In a lot of design, I would not say most of cases, but a lot of cases, we have scenario two. What if A is larger than HF? Okay, so when A is larger than HF, we need to do is we need to separate, separate the flange and the web. Separate the flange and the web. So how to separate, this is how. So I have a T section again. <clears throat> I have a T-section again, okay? And in the scenario that my compressor zone A, somewhere now, is bigger. See, I'm dividing them now. It's larger than HF. This is A, this is HF, okay? And then stress distribution for this case, and this is BE, <clears throat> equal to BW plus two BF, this is BF, and this is BW, the web width. And my 3D stress distribution looks like this now, folks. I draw the T-section, okay? I draw the T-section and I separate them. I separate them by two parts. One part is only the flange. Okay, one part is only the flange, this part. And now the stress distributed in this flange will look like this. A small, tiny block, boxes, 
small tiny block and boxes. Okay, small tiny block like boxes. Okay, and this follows is 0 0.85 at prime C, and this here is BF. All right, <clears throat> and corresponding, like I said, is symmetric, right? So on the other flange, you have the same thing. You have the same thing. And then this folks here is tiny boxes like that in 3D. And this is 0 0.85 at prime C, of course. And this size here is BF. Okay. And now the height of both block is HF. Okay. So I know immediately the concentrated total compression force. This is CC. We call it CCF because this is from the flange. And this is half of it. And this is another half of it. Okay. This is another half of it. <clears throat> All right. Now, in this case, these are only flanges, right? These are only flanges. But if I have the reinforcement I have here, I can start thinking about the moment resistance caused by the flange, right? Because this is total tension force and still equal to ASFY, okay? And perhaps I can separate them. I can separate them as flange. So I can separate my reinforcement. Let my reinforcement divided by reinforce, divide my reinforcement by two parts. One is the reinforcement that has to balance the compression force from the flange and the other reinforcement will balance the compression force from the web, okay? Which we'll talk about on the right-hand side. This is just the flange, okay? Sorry, anyone need more space here? Probably just do a plus here, okay? So this equal to the flange plus the web, all right? And let's finish the flange. So here, the moment capacity from the flange, right? I mean, F would equal to what? Would equal to ASF, okay? And FY multiplied distance. What is distance between the CCF to the tension reinforcement? That is DS minus HF divided by two. Because that's where the center is at, half of HF, half of HF. So that is the moment caused by the flange. That is the moment caused by the flange. Then this is only the flange part, right? So now I'm looking at the web part. I'm looking at the web part. So now let's dash out the flange part. Dash out the flange part. Because we have talked about it already, right? Only left with the web part. Okay, only left with the web part. <clears throat> so now, I have this web, beautiful web here. And then now, instead of drawing the A as HF, because now you have a different lens of it, right? So here I still use Whitney stress block. Don't get me wrong. I still use Whitney stress block. And this is BW, folks, okay? And this is 0 0.85 F prime C, all right? And now I'm just gonna go all the way down here <clears throat> all the way down here and reach to a distance of A. Okay, and gentlemen, ladies, these are the A. These are the A. All right, so now the total compression force from the web, CCW, right? CCW, and the distance between this and the reinforcement. And let me just use blue to co correspond to that. So this is ASW only, right? And the distance between the CCW and ASW, now this distance is DS minus half A steel. DS minus half A steel. So M moment from the web, M and W equal to ASW, FY, DS minus half A. Okay. So with that, right, with that, I can write my total moment resistance MM has two parts basically. One is from the flange and one is from the web. Okay, MNF from the flange, MNW from the web. And sometimes also people might say that MN1 
indicating flange, and N2 indicating from web. It's up to you, okay, which symbol you use. I use flange and web just to put the physical meaning behind it so I know what I'm talking about. But you are free to use one and two, okay? If we're free to use one and two. But the most important thing here is implicitly we have done is we split the reinforcement, total reinforcement, and that equal to the flange reinforcement, the reinforcement for flange, okay? Not really located in the flange, but this is the amount of reinforcement will balance the compression coming from the flange. And you have another portion of the reinforcement will balance the compression from the web. So these are the, these are the important messages here. All right, so let me start summarize. So with this stress distribution, with this stress distribution, I essentially saying that in the flange, in the flange, <coughs> my total compression CCF would equal to 0 0.85 F prime C and area would be HF, the full flange height, the full flange height, okay? Multiplied by the width of it. And now this has got to be BE, BE minus BW. Or if you want to write it in a different way, 0 0.85 F prime C HF, this is 2 BF. 2 BF. Okay. Now we know that is the compression. And then we try compression equal to tension ASF FY, right? Equal to tension. This is tension for the flange. So we can balance it out and calculate the reinforcement needed for the flange. So ASF would equal to 0 0.85 F prime C HF and BE minus BW divided by FY. That's the reinforcement needed for the flange. And folks, this equation need you to remember it. I need you to remember it, okay? Because you need that for design, need that for design. So this is the reinforcement area reinforcement needed to balance out the compression from the flange, from the flange. So from there, we again, we have wrote, we have written this before, but again, M and F, equal to ASF of Y, and then multiply distance, which is DS minus half IHF. Okay. All right. So that is the sub moment or section moment from the flange. <clears throat> section moment from the flange. So quickly now look at the web. Look at the web, right? Now CCW, which is the compression force of the concrete from the web only, equal to 0 0.85 F prime C. A, B, W. That's a different there, A, B, W, right? And again, use tension for the web, A, S, W, multiply F, Y, equal to compression in the web. So what I got is A, S, W, equal to 0 0.85 F prime C, A, B, W, divided by F, Y. Then again, folks, this is a reinforcement needed for the web. reinforcement needed for the web, all right? So be careful now with this, you select the bars, right? Usually select the bars when you have that select reinforcement for web, select the bars and then recompute A, recompute A, basically update ASW, update ASW and recompute A and A is ASWFY divided by 0.85, <clears throat> at prime C, BW, and then the web moment, M and web, would equal to AS, W, FY, and then DS minus half A. And folks, this is the moment for the web. This is the moment for the web. Emphasize that, very important, okay? Need to remember it. Now, with everything said and done, from the flange and from the web, the design approach would be the final design approach would be phi MNF plus MN web. That is MN basically, right? Has to be greater than or equal to MU. And when that is satisfied, we're done. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is the theory or stress distribution of the TB. Okay, so a quick review, right? 
we first talk about how we define the geometry of the T-beam based on this ACI code, ACI table 6.3.2.1. When you get the time, please take a look at it. But I summarize the table here for T-shape is the least of these three and for the L-shape is the least of these three. And you know that for T-shape is slightly larger than L-shape. Okay, and don't forget when we have adjacent span, use the average span. And then we look into the stress distribution of the T-beam, two scenarios. If the effective flange width A is smaller than HF, which we'll compute, we'll show you next lecture. And then we treat it as a rectangular beam with a bigger width BE here. Very nice, right? Very nice, we've seen this before. If it's scenario two, which means A is larger than HF, the compressor node has exceeded the flange height, you gotta treat them separately. You gotta pre-calculate the compression from the flange and then calculate the compression from the web and balance out them each individually to get a reinforcement correspondingly for the flange, reinforcement corresponding for the web, and sum the moments individually, then add them up together. All right, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the theory we're gonna to use to stop the T-beam. If you want to learn more, we'll see you next Monday. Okay, we'll show you an example. All right, okay, today's gonna to be a quick lecture. I'm gonna pause here and welcome any questions. If I don't have any questions, I will see you on Monday, okay? Thank you all and see you on Monday. Thank you. Yep. Will this be tested on the exam? The T-beam? Most likely not, all right? Okay. Most likely not, but you know, you should know this, right? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, Dr. Wu. Hey, Xiang, how are you? I got a quick question. Yeah. So let so me pause use... recording. Just a okay. second. Let me pause recording because I want to cut it short. I don't want too, too big a file size. Okay.